Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George. We're all George. So, today is a fantastic day. Of course, it's a fantastic day when everything is rallying up. We're all George. So, so oops, I have a today is a fantastic echo today. day. Of course, it's a fantastic. Let me get rid of that echo. My apologies. All right, echo gone. But tonight, I want to talk about, of course, Bitcoin, the latest. With Bitcoin, it has fallen down a little bit. Should we be concerned? And also, there are a few altcoins that I believe you definitely should keep your eyes on because they are still oversold and there's still a lot of potential on them. So let's get started. Smash the like, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell to get notified of my streams. Follow me on social media for exclusive content and for notification reasons. And lastly, check out all the latest news, article, and guides at CryptosRUs.com. And no, I'm not hungover. I am just very sunburned from one day being on the beach. I have not <laughs> drank anything tonight. So, uh, so. That's just the reality. <laughs> All right. So um, let's get started. I have my triple monitor set up now. So even though I am away from my away from my normal setup, I have like three monitors and it's really, really cool. And I'm able to look at the live chat so I don't have to utilize my phone to look at it. I could actually look at it on the, these portable two monitors. It's really cool, and it hooks up to your main laptop. So, anyways, I, I know you guys can't see that, but I have tweeted that out before. It's really nice. Um, so, Bitcoin is at 47, 47.6. Fell down a little bit from this morning, right? This morning, it went as high as 48.2. Why did it fall down? Well, I did say that some of the short, shorter-term indicators were a little bit high. And at some point, Bitcoin was going to fall and consolidate and that's exactly what happened now can we see more of that possibly i mean bitcoin has been going up and up and up and up for quite some time so shorter time frames like the four hour and the daily it does seem like you know there could be a little bit more consolidation retracement you can see like especially on a daily the rsi is quite high over here. Stochastic is quite high. But on the shorter time frames, they have reset. Like the one hour bounced off of the 50. So it does look like short term, there could still be some momentum left. But I do think that at some point, maybe later this week, we'll probably find some kind of point where we just kind of stall a little bit. Kind of like if you look at what we went through, you know, Last week, you, you could see how it kind of went sideways a little bit, right? And periods between, we had like this, where it's sideways movement. We had like kind of like this sideways movement, right? This always happens. And recently, we've just been lucky. We've been getting more and up and up and up and up, right? And this is what we want, of course. And all coins are rallying hard because of it, right? And... One of the good things about Bitcoin taking consolidation is a lot of that money flows more into altcoins. So if we do see that with Bitcoin, let's say we just hover around this 47 mark, 48 mark, right, for maybe a few days, for a week, we could see more go into the altcoins, which I know a lot of you guys are big, big, big fan of, always asking, when altcoin season? When are we going to see altcoin season? <laughs> well... We may not ever see like a true altcoin season again because there's no four-year cycle anymore, I believe. But we're definitely going to see periods where Bitcoin stalls and all the money flows in altcoins and then you're going to see a big explosion upwards. And we have seen a little bit of that recently. Uh, Andrea is a big super chat. Do you think this week we'll hit 51 BDC and 3,800 for ETH? You know, that really depends on, after what I just got done saying, it really depends on if we get some massive buying. If Doquan puts another 100, 200, 500 million into the market, 
right? Regardless of what the TA says, Bitcoin's going to pump and you're going to get more short squeezes. That is a certainty, right? But let's assume that, hey, maybe he wants to take a breather. He doesn't want to buy any more Bitcoin, which is unlikely for this week. Uh, then we may just get a consolidation. May We may not see that 51,000 mark for Bitcoin. But really what we want to see is Bitcoin... The next step is to get to this 51.8, which will be a really, really, really exciting point. Okay. The last few times we hit 51.8, right, was when we came down. But the times that we did go above it, were, we were in the 60,000s, right? 64,000 at one time and 69,000 for another time. So I do think that we will hit this 52 mark. Just depends on. Depends on how much Doe and I wants to buy, right? <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. But longer term, we got so much good stuff coming, guys. So much good stuff. It's just so ridiculously early. And you know what? That's just the bottom line. Um, so let's get started with some of the Bitcoin stuff. Well, look at this. Grayscale. Grayscale is doing the opposite of what the SEC does. <laughs> they might sue the SEC. Uh, all we ever hear about is the SEC suing crypto companies, but the Grayscale Investment Trust, or at least Grayscale themselves, um, they may sue the SEC if the SEC refuses to allow them to convert their Bitcoin trust into an ETF because there's really no basis for it. Bitcoin is way too big now and is recognized around the world. It's recognized everywhere. And there's already ETF offerings around the world, too, especially you just look above us in Canada. They already have the biggest Bitcoin ETF, right? And the fact that the SEC already allowed a futures ETF, but not a spot ETF, raises questions. So Grayscale putting in pressure on the SEC saying, hey, if you guys deny us, we will go to court. And you know what? Grayscale has plenty of money to fight this for a very long time. And we know that Gary Gensler does have a lot of pressure. He's been asked by many Congress people, subpoena, in fact, asking why he did not uh, approve a spot ETF. So if this happens, this could definitely be a huge money driver for Bitcoin and crypto overall so this could be it'll be interesting the next application is in may and then we have another one in june i don't know when grayscale's application is but something to look forward to uh any concern for end of first quarter to impact the current pump no you got to give me more context to that i mean in regards to what earnings rate hikes i mean Right now, no, because right now Bitcoin is not moving in the same direction as the markets. You look at the U.S. markets today, I don't have it pulled up, was not doing too good. With the exception of just Tesla, everything else was not doing good. So right now, Bitcoin has, at least temporarily, decoupled away from the NASDAQ. And the more it decouples, the better it is. And earning seasons and all the stuff that Wall Street guys look at, Pretty soon, there's going to be a non-factor when it comes to Bitcoin and crypto. Eventually, it'll get there. Eventually, it'll get there. Um, what else is there? Well, of course, we still have we have the Russian invasion or Russian-Ukraine war that's ongoing, right? But Bitcoin has risen 35% since the war started. Could it be that Russians and Ukrainians are buying crypto? Most certainly. Some of you guys may have noticed that waves shot up, right, out of the blue. Any reason? Well, Waves is actually a blockchain company that's based in Russia. So it makes sense that they started shooting up because probably a lot of Russians started buying into them, right? But not only that, Russians probably bought into Bitcoin. Same thing with the Ukrainians, especially ones that need to you know, take their wealth with them, especially uh, the two million, the two million plus that have left and fled the country. 
You know, when the banks are down, when the ATMs are down, how else you go get your money out, right? You transfer or you buy Bitcoin and you take it with you. So obviously this has been helping Bitcoin and bring it, you know, global attention, right? And it's kind of one of those things, it's like the cat's out of the bag, right? Or yes, cat's out of the bag or the genie is out of the bottle or that I mean genie's out of the bag. <laughs> Regardless, you know what I mean, right? And the world is paying attention if they notice this. And it's not just them. Other countries, other citizens from, you know, that's suffering from hyperinflation or geopolitical turmoil like this, they're all turning to Bitcoin too. And that is why, according to Willy Wu, um, if you look at U.S. investors, 11% own gold, 56% own stocks, but both have been stagnant over the last three years. And guess what has tripled within the last three years? Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Now there's more U.S. investors that own Bitcoin. In fact, more than double own Bitcoin versus gold. And pretty soon, pretty soon, I don't know. I don't know about pretty soon because there's, there's always going to be people that own a lot of stocks. But that number between Bitcoin and stocks is going to get closer and closer and closer until it's one to one. Eventually, you're going to have all stock investors that will own some Bitcoin. It just makes sense, right? It's the two very different things. Just like all coins are very different than Bitcoin, right? There's no reason you 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 have to have one or the other. You should have both. You have to have both, and that's going to happen. Um, other things, you know, projecting Bitcoin's growth right now, same number of users, so roughly around 1 billion, a little bit less. Um, actually, I read that wrong. I'm sorry. Um, it's around 130 million, not even close to a billion. So just think about that. But basically, we're the same amount of users, Bitcoin users, as internet users back in 1997, do you still remember what was happening in 1997? I, I don't. <laughs> I, was in, I was in high school. I don't know what was going on back then, right? I don't even know what what I was doing online. Well, actually, I do know what I was doing online, but I don't want to share. <laughs> but, um, but you get my point. Again, very early, very early indeed. And this is not even talking about Web 3.0 and metaverse and games and you know nfts this is just counting bitcoin imagine everything else right all right what else is there um let's see here let's get rid of that guy tech dev posted a pretty good pretty good uh indicator a three-week vortex indicator um, and this is a pretty telling one. Take a look. Every time we had this three-week vortex indicator, which had a bullish cross, look at what happened with Bitcoin. Almost every single time you had a huge, huge, huge movement upwards. Okay. And guess what just crossed? Bitcoin, right? So, is it a coincidence or is this the start of something fabulous? You know, kind of like, this is kind of like, you know, the, the, the spring equinox thing that I mentioned, you know, a few weeks ago. I looked at a spring equinox and I looked at last time it happened. You know when the last time spring equinox happened? Right around here, right around uh, when Bitcoin was around 3,800. And a shot up to sixty-four thousand. Um, yeah, that was the start of the last spring equinox. And guess what? We just started another spring equinox. So, coincidence? I think not. I think not. And I think it's all tied together, right? So that's Bitcoin. Now, as for all these other ones, uh, Os, thank you. As for all the other altcoins, right? A lot of good stuff going on. Of course, the, the the second big daddy, Ethereum, 
is climbing higher. We're at what, 3,400? Yeah, pretty close. 3,400. Tremendous movement. 17% in the last seven days, about 24% in the last 30 days. And the whales are buying, just like they're buying Bitcoin and removing them off the exchanges. Same thing with Ethereum, 4.1 billion, 4.1 billion removed from the exchanges recently. That's 180,000 ETH, 180,000 ETH. That is a lot. That's a lot. And that's because there's a lot of people that believe in Ethereum as well. And with Ethereum 2.0 around the corner, they want to stock up and load up while things are still cheap. So Ethereum still being bought by the billions. Uh, a few other ones, uh, some I mentioned, some I haven't. For example, Chili's, right? They're about to release their 2.0 chain. So I mentioned this a few days ago. So I think this will come out at the end of the, week, end of the month. So that's why I think Chili's have been doing pretty well. Um, Jason, thank you. Uh, Filecoin has been doing very well. I missed this, but Filecoin is going to introduce their own virtual machine. They call it FVM, which will be EVM compatible. So they want to go beyond just decentralized storage. They want to actually be a computing play, a computing play and a storage play. Quite interesting. Actually, very interesting. No other... Decentralized storage plays is combining their own computing layer, in this case, FVM, right? And I don't get the whole picture because usually decentralized storage plays, uh, they rely on the chains to compute, right? For example, Arweave. Arweave is the, is the storage block, you know, block, um, storage platform, storage um, um yeah, the decentralized storage for Solana. And Solana, of course, has their own virtual machine. So that's how the relationship works, right? But this will be interesting. This start could be sort of something great. I, I just don't know what their ultimate plan is, but this did come out, and this is why Filecoin has shot up a lot and something to pay attention to going forward. Kim, thank you for that. Thank you. Now, what about some of these other undervalued altcoins, right? The ones to keep your eyes on. Well, I was looking at CMC and I'm always looking at CMC, even on vacation. And that's pretty sad. But I was looking at, okay, now that we have a pretty good rise with Bitcoin, a lot of altcoins have gone up. So which ones have not moved as much as the others? Especially when it comes to L1s and the projects I believe in, the project I followed for many, many years, and I'm looking at them, okay, which ones didn't move as much as the others, or which ones fell more than others? Well, so I started looking into them, and, you know, if you look at 24 hours, obviously most things are in green, 7 day, 30 days, right? But let's go back 90 days. This will ba basically go to the beginning of the year, right, in January. What has fallen the most in January. Well, if you look at top 10, it's pretty obvious, right? Which one fallen the most? Solana. Solana is still down 40% since January, right? Even though it has a pretty good recovery, it's above 100, it's 110, right? Still sitting below Cardano. However, it's still 40% down from January. So I do think Solana is a prime target, one that, yes, has been coming up a little bit, but there's still a lot of room to grow, even to get back to its previous highs, right? Now, Solana has had its problems. So there's reason, I believe, for that. And there's been a lot of network outages, also a little bit more centralized because of the VC's holdings. But they still have a lot of things, great things going for them. They're still one of the fastest chains out there. They have, for example, uh, I was looking at this. There's a brand new, there's going to be a brand new fund created by Grayscale that is populated by a whole lot of Solana. So that's going to help them. And it's not just them and several others, but Solana is definitely the bigger one in this fund. If you look at their TVL, 
right? TVL, they're still sitting at number five. So they're still within the top five. And when you look at NFTs and NFT volume, they are sitting at number two. Even though Ethereum and Solana, there's a big gap, okay? Big gap in terms of sales volume. But number two is still Solana. And between Solana and Avalanche and Flow and Rona, you can see the gap widens even more. So there's still a lot of great stuff that's happening with Solana. So I do think they're still going to have opportunity to come back and come back very strong. So I would say, number one, keep your eye on Solana and uh, don't discount them. Uh, Manko, would you consider holding, say, 40% of your savings in stablecoin? I mean, 40% is quite high. 40%. I mean, there's nothing wrong holding a lot of cash on the side, but it's a lot. So the market starts rallying up, right? You're going to start noticing your BTC value of your portfolio drop like a rock because that stable coin is just not doing anything. So uh, I don't think there's any real dangers, okay? But you may be missing out a little bit too much. Um, inflation helping crypto to become more mainstream. Yes, that is definitely, inflation is definitely helping. All right. Now, besides Solana, I decided to go down a little more. And I noticed I stopped at number 17, Polygon. It's also down 35% from January, right? Really no reason for that. Polygon is one of the strongest L2s out there. Although, just like Solana, because of the, the increased usage, they did have an outage recently. So that's the one negative for them. A lot of crypto projects, they're starting to see an explosion with their volume, and then they, they have setbacks. So Polygon did have, um, they did have a network outage, but they recover from that. And just like Solana, I mean, they're part of this new fund that's from Grayscale. This could cause a massive amount of buying. Their TVL, relatively high at number eight. So they have that going for them, right? And you have other things going for them. For example, they have their mobile, they have their burning just like Ethereum. They have a ton of projects and they made a ton of acquisitions too, especially to help Ethereum scale. So I would say Polygon is definitely my favorite L2 out there. L2, L1, pretty close to L1. And I do believe that they are undervalued and oversold. You know, being number 17, I think they should be a lot higher and still down 35%. So that's another one to keep your eye on. Now, I decided to go down a little bit more. What else is there? Well, I was going to talk about Algorand, right? But I don't have anything new to talk about Algorand. I've been talking a lot about them. But I would say they are ones, also another one to keep your eye on. Still down nearly 38%. They have a lot of good things going on. But one thing that they don't have a lot of right now is TVL. And if they could get more DeFi projects on board, that would definitely push them up. But they have a huge presence in Latin America. And they are growing that. So that's fantastic. But... Going down the list, I got to stop at 37 with VeChain. A lot of exciting things happening with VeChain right now. So even though they came up a little bit, 55% in the last 30 days, well, they should be a lot higher than that. They should be a lot higher. So what's going on with VeChain? Well, a couple things. Number one is, yes, they're about to move to Europe. And the reason being because they want to go all out with the, the West they already pretty much dominate the East in terms of all the supply chain, um, anything that's on the supply, anything that deals with supply chain that's on the blockchain is with VeChain. Some of the biggest companies out there, right, is on top of VeChain. But the West, not so much. So they want to definitely get more presence in the West. And, and there is a big rumor that they will be listed on Coinbase soon. Now, this has been talked about a lot, but there seems to be more, more motion, I guess, with that, more traction. So that could definitely help them because VeChain is not on Coinbase. And if they get added, usually if you get added on Coinbase, you get added on all the 
all the U.S. exchanges like Gemini and Kraken and everyone else, right? So they get added. That would be a tremendous thing. And of course, they're still building out their VUSD, which is their stable coin, right? So they really want to make a big push into DeFi. Like Algorand, they don't have a lot of TBL, but they definitely want to change that. So that could be a huge thing this year as they grow their DeFi ecosystem. So that's another one to pay attention to. And lastly, I want to stick with number 45, which is Phantom. They're down about 39% from January. Again, they had FUD. FUD about Andre Croe leaving, taking all his projects, and now Phantom is dead. No, that's far from it, okay? Um, just take a look at this. The number of addresses on Phantom, does that look like a dead chain to you? That, that's just sky high. Just keep going and going and going and going. <laughs> so there is enormous amount of new users coming into Phantom, mostly because their DeFi ecosystem is fantastic. You look at like someone like Spooky Swap providing a ton of liquidity, and there's so many others out there that I don't even know of anymore. I mean, there's just so many. Phantom has a lot of great things going on, right? And like VeChain, they will be coming out, well, at least a project will be coming out with a brand new stablecoin, USDB, that will be also be used, of course, for DeFi reasons. And you're going to get a ton of interest with with uh, staking on this new DeFi platform that will be utilizing this new stablecoin. So that is also coming out, right? Relatively new, unknown, but still, whenever you have a lot of you know, excitement, it could be a really, really good thing. So Phantom is definitely another one I really believe in, and I do believe that they're going to they're gonna come back. They will come back. So there you go. Those are the ones I want to concentrate on today. There's a lot more. There's a lot more that you need to keep your eye on. But tonight, I only have time for these. All right. That is pretty much it. Now let's do some Q&A. I don't have, I don't have any water with me. So, I never tried this before. <laughs> There's some kind of energy drink called Bang. I don't know if you guys tried this before. Uh, it has a whole bunch of vitamins in here. So, I don't know if you guys tried it. It tastes pretty good. Mike Warren knows they're pretty good. Uh, Barak, Barak, my portfolio is at the green now since November. I have coins that pumped and just broke even. How would be different now versus last time? Well, no one could predict the future, right? But if you're trying to prevent last time, then do something about it. Prepare yourself, right? Prepare yourself. So if you didn't have cash last time, you didn't have the ability to to buy the dip or DCA when things went down, make sure you do that this time. If you are in the green, take some profit out. Have about 20 to 25% in cash or USD, right? Or it's USDC or USDT or stable coins. That way, if we do flip down again, you are in a better position. You have the ability to buy lower and dollar cost average, right? So, I mean, that's the only thing you could do. You learn from your mistakes. You learn from your mistakes. And you move forward. Uh, Jesus, will you send my offer on OpenSea? I can't because I'm traveling right now, but I know what you're talking about. I don't know why you guys weren't bidding before the auction ended. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, when I get home, I will. All the hot fitness girls are sponsored by Bang. I did not know that. This is the first time I've ever heard this drink before, but it was in the store here, and I decided to give it a try. Tastes pretty good. Much better than Red Bull. If you DCA into Bitcoin, Ethereum, and alt since 2017, then you should be doing well now. Well, that's 
Exactly true. That's exactly true. Many people that that have been doing it have achieved life changing wealth and are multi millionaires now. So yes. Um. You guys are hilarious. Yeah, zero sugar too. Um, I'm a yeast holder and I feel bullish, but are you concerned it's become a big banker coin? JP Morgan owns 10% mass, MetaMass and Inferia. What does that have to do with ETH? MetaMass doesn't control Ethereum. Consensus doesn't control Ethereum. So no, no, I don't. Uh, try Celsius. Yes, I, I drink Celsius when I go work out. That's that's more marketed towards like a pre-workout, like you're supposed to drink it and during. And uh, it definitely does make me sweat more. Oh, they're headquartered in Miami. Maybe they're going to be a sponsor of uh, Bitcoin 2022. Any thoughts on uh, Polkadot? I still like them. They're just slow, but you know, they're trying to keep up. They've been making some good moves recently. 25% in the last 30 days. Not as much as the others, but you know about it. About in line. About in line. Uh, you know, more than XRP and BNB. So, and even more than Avalanche recently. Been wanting to FOMO lately, hate to say. Hey, you know what? We all go through the same thing. When things are looking good, things look unstoppable, and they just want to keep going and going and going, right? FOMO builds. FOMO builds. But all everything I've been saying, right, should not be ignored and discounted. What have I always said about buying? You buy low and you sell high, right? You don't want to wait for confirmation. And I've said so many people will only buy after they get confirmation that things are going up. And that's usually after <laughs> we go up a lot and maybe be toward the top, right? No, you don't want to do that. So you buy low and you sell high. Or you ignore all that and you just DCA. Sprout your buys and set a schedule. Every week, every two weeks or whatever, right? That's how you do it. Then you you ignore you ignore FUD or FOMO and you take emotion out of it. MTMD. You did it wrong this whole time. Is Gala exploding? I hope so. I like Gala. I think they have a lot of potential. Their gaming platform, a ton of games coming out, and all play to earn games, and some of them even free. Most play to earn games right now are not free. You have to buy something to get started, right? But I think they're going to make that change. A lot of play to earn games just go be free, and that's going to attract a lot more users. So. Doge Elon Moore, should I keep holding it? I don't know because I've never recommended that project ever. And I can't take that project seriously because of that stupid name. So, no. John, you, I... Thank you, and then that's exactly what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, probably go DCA into Luna. You know, Luna finally started moving, right? I told you guys, Terra, once it breaks out of its funk, it will start moving, and you could see that it did because it's at 104, right? It's been stuck under 100 for quite some time. I would not be surprised. Terra, with all the momentum they've been, you know, they've been uh, – 
I should say all the attention that Doe and Terra has been getting, right? And the, quite simply the momentum, uh, you know, this could carry them very, very, very far. Maybe, maybe even to like 150, you know? So maybe not right away, but they're definitely going to go in the right direction. Do you think one day they will be top three? Top three is going to be very hard. UST has to be like as big as USDT, then maybe they have a shot. But I mean, do they have a shot? Yeah. But anytime soon, probably not. Probably not. Just like, you know, anything really has a shot. Uh, I know that, you know, Raul Paul been calling Ethereum at 30,000, right? And people heckle him for that prediction. Can Ethereum get to 30,000? Yeah, it has a shot. <laughs> Maybe not anytime soon, but if Ethereum, you know, does well with their Ethereum 2.0, continues to grow, continues to just really help ETH, uh, Web 3.0 grow to become the next internet, think about that. Yeah, there could definitely be enough money flowing in to pump it 10x. Thanks for helping me keep thanks for helping to keep me in the game. See some real growth in my portfolio after coming in a little too high. Well, simple green, I I'm glad to hear it. And congratulations. And keep going. Keep keep at it. George, I finally got my Lego strap on set. This could be a good night. <laughs> be careful. It might break. It might break on you. That's going to be painful. Um, George, the other day you said, who would who would want a Paul Pierce jersey? I had a Celtics one. <laughs> you know Why? You know why I, I don't like Paul Pierce? Because he is a hater. He keeps hating on all these greats because he believes he's better. You know, he considers himself better than Dwayne Wade. He, he always, like, shits on Kobe. Uh, he shits on LeBron, you know. He talks like he has, like, six rings. And, you know, he just thinks, like, he's the greatest ever. So that that's the reason why I don't like Paul Pierce. I know he's a great player, but he's just like he's just like ripping on everyone, right? <laughs> he's talking like he's like Shaq or someone. But anyways. <sighs> yep. Yeah. Same thing with KD. KD always always goes on air and says, Oh, you know, we broke LeBron. We broke him. You broke him? LeBron has how many rings and how many do you have, KD? And you only won your one ring because you joined a super team. It's not like you did it in Minnesota. So what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you so proud of? You had to join a super team before you won, and you only won one. You couldn't get past the Lakers. So KD is also talking a lot of smack, even though he doesn't – he didn't do it better than any other guys. Other guys. Yeah. Are you familiar with Polkadot? I mean, there's a lot of people asking about Polkadot. Yes, I am familiar with Polkadot. Oh, no. That's uh, P-O-K-T. Which one is... Pocket Network? No, I'm not familiar with Pocket Network. Never heard of it. Oh, I'm sorry, KG, KG. I didn't mean KD, KG, KG. Pierce's, Pierce's uh, teammate, KG. Um, BNB, BNB is going through a transition right now. Their chain is being updated. Um, it's going to be more decentralized, according to them, and it's going to be faster and more scalable and... Uh, many of the EIP improvements from Ethereum will be carried over. 
But ultimately, Binance is so big, I, I have no worries that they will continue on and get bigger and stronger. So, yes. Did you know Paul Pierce, did you know Pierce was stabbed like eight times in the back? I think I remember that. I think I remember hearing that. Irene, thank you. Ronda was on that team. Very, uh, very forgettable though. Top of the law, attraction shorts. What a name. LeBron is weak. He wouldn't last in George era ever. Dennis Rodman would have shut him down. Okay. Okay. I don't know why so many people love to hate on LeBron. Mostly because I think they're just jealous. I was too. I'll admit. I was a LeBron hater. And then and then I felt sorry for him because he tried to beat a 73-win team with KD added. It's like a one-man show. It's like one versus four. And uh, and that really turned it turned me, and I realized it's just it's just not fair. It's just not fair, and we take LeBron for granted. He's in year what seventeen or nineteen or whatever it is. He's thirty-seven years old, turning thirty-eight, and he's still like leading the league in scoring. <laughs> he's still considered one of the top two or three players in the league, yet people like to hate on him, mostly because I think they're just jealous. That's it. You know, I am, of course, a Jordan fan. Anyone in basketball, anyone that likes basketball is a Jordan fan. There's no doubt, right? But, you know, this whole thing about 90s and 2000s, you know, being more physical, which is true, but, you know, the league, even though is softer, everyone playing in a league today is 100 times more skilled than 20 or 30 years ago. And here's my proof. Do you remember Judd Bushler or Bill Wennington or any of the bench players on the Bulls? Luke Longley? Do you think any of them? in their prime, would be in the NBA today? And the answer is no. Judd Bushler would never have made it to the NBA <laughs> if he was in this era, okay? There's just no way, right? So despite the fact that the 90s and 2000s had a lot of terrific stars, but you look at the bench players, you look at some of the guys that were playing back then, there's no way in hell they would be in the league today. That's the difference. The The athletic level have gone up so much in the last 20 or 30 years. I don't think you could just say, okay, 90 players were better because they were just more physical. But there's so many bench players that they just dem demonstrated, you know, um, because they just <laughs> – the, the skill gap was just quite large. So that's how I look at it. All right. Lambeer, Lambeer, you know, there's a Lambeer today. Who's that? That uh, that guy that used to be on uh, Golden State that broke Kwai's uh, ankle. Zaza, Buchilia, or whatever. He he would be. He's the modern day Bill Lambeer. And look at what, <laughs> look at how good he is. You know. So, yeah, that's how I look at it. Larry Bird would make it. Of course, I never I never watched Larry Bird. Those before me, but uh, the fact that all, so many people pay homage to Larry Bird shows how good he was. So I'm pretty sure Luca, you know, Luca or Dirk, probably the closest thing we have to Larry Bird, although I know Dirk has retired already. <laughs> but Luca is pretty unstoppable right now. Yeah, Zaza put cheap shot. I mean, he's exactly like Lambeer, right? If Lambeer was playing today, it will be him. 
So, I mean, you know, bottom line is if you look at like, man, you look at it like the 90s Bulls, even let's just, let's just pick out Steve Kerr. Can Steve Kerr in his prime play in today's NBA? Right? Can 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 Steve Kerr play in this era? And I would argue no. No, he couldn't. <laughs> so, and he hit some important shots for Michael back in the day, right? So, I mean, I just can't see someone like like Steve Kerr playing even today. Like who who would be equivalent to Steve Kerr today? Um I don't know. I don't I don't know. Who would be equivalent to Steve Kerr? Uh, Tyler Hero, I guess. Maybe from Miami, Tyler Hero. But I I would say Tyler Hero would destroy Steve Kerr one on one in his prime. <laughs> My opinion. All right, guys. I'll let you guys go. Overall, I know you guys didn't tune 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 in for NBA chat, but that's what you'll get when you when you watch me. Um anyway, so you know, Bitcoin still doing well, came down a little bit. All coins still doing well, but there's a lot more to come. So make sure, make sure you stay in the game, continue to do what you're doing, have patience, DCA, hold it, and let the gains come to you. All right, guys, smash up the like, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys.